your Bibles. I, listen, guys, I am going to teach today. So I'm not going to be unnecessarily long-winded, but I am going to teach. And I want you to learn. We don't get anywhere without learning. So go to Mark chapter 11. Let's get into this. And thank you to all the E-teamers, volunteers. We call that our volunteer team. Thank you to all of you who are always serving every week. If you're not serving this week, I still want to say thank you. Because without you, we couldn't do a thing. Yeah, somebody needs to clap. We couldn't do a thing without good, faithful people. Amen. This is a very important lesson today. Somebody say dealing with desire. I don't know if you followed the first four parts. We're going to build on top of that, dealing with desire. This is part number five in total. My wife did four, number four. So this will be part number five. Let's go right into the scriptures here and we'll jump into it today. Mark chapter 11. Actually, I'm going to start at verse 11. If you guys can put that up on the screen for me. And it says, and Jesus went into Jerusalem and into the temple. This is important. Somebody say, into the temple. So when he had looked around at all things, somebody say, he looked around. It's important. As the hour was already late, he went out to Bethany with the 12. Let me just set this up. I am going to teach today. Jesus goes into Jerusalem. And he looks, he goes to the temple and he looks around. That's important. Jesus is examining the temple. He's examining the conditions. He's examining the people. He's examining what's happening in it. He's paying attention. He's he's doing an assessment. Um, If I could teach you anything about kingdom culture, one thing you got to know about kings is they are never idle concerning their dominions. If they have a dominion or a territory they rule over, they often go on a on an itinerant schedule to visit and taste the fruit of each dominion they go visit and check and inspect or they'll send a delegation to do this for them all right this is very important that you understand kingdom culture because the king jesus is in his temple he's looking around he's examining he wants to see what's happening and then the next day verse 12 uh, they had come out of bethany and he was hungry Now, that's important, too. Now, this is not physical hunger as if, you know, um, he hadn't eaten in a while. This is a very, this is a spiritual thing that is happening here. It's not just, he's about to teach a lesson here, okay? And so, this idea here is not just about being physically hungry, but he was hungry and seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves on it, he went to see, perhaps if he'd find something on it. Now, let me tie these two things together. The parable of the fig tree is connecting to the idea of the temple in Jerusalem. When you search the tradition and the Hebrew um, origin of the Bible, anytime you see figs, fig trees, olive trees, this is a picture of the nation of Israel and a picture of the Jewish state. Keep in mind, we're talking about kingdom things. So as Jesus is going into Jerusalem, he goes into the temple, and he looked around to see what he could see. He leaves the temple, and he goes looking for a tree. The tree represents the temple and the state. He also does the same exercise to the tree, because he's about to teach a lesson through the tree about the temple and about the state. He looks at the tree, and he is looking for what he can see. To see if perhaps he would find something edifying on it. Something that would satisfy his hunger. He comes out of the temple, you understand, and he looked around. He looked, what did he look for in the temple? He was looking for something to edify his hunger. You see this. So in the temple, you're supposed to be fed. Something that will sustain you. Something that will give you the nourishment to produce Your purpose on the earth to manifest the glory of God or the kingdom of heaven on the earth. This is the purpose of the temple. Okay. And so Jesus goes in and looks around and he found nothing in there. And so, and the reason I know that is because of the context. When he comes out, he says, I'm going to use this tree because the tree is symbolic. Anytime you see tree, you are seeing the picture of a uh, program or a 
uh, well, how can I say, an educational system, something to program the mind of the people. Because this is also what happened in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. The trees represented programs, knowledge. Either the knowledge of the kingdom or the knowledge that there are two sides to the coin, good and evil, which evil is not a real thing. Evil is the absence of a thing. It's not a thing. It doesn't have an entity. There's no, there's no divine place for evil. Evil is the absence of good. So there's a choice here. So when you see trees, generally you are looking at programs and things that represent a state or a government. Y'all getting this so far? I'm trying not to go too fast. So you have a governmental picture here of what and what happens inside of governments. Governments produce mindsets. The job of the government, governments don't have authority, governments don't have power, and governments don't have money, and governments don't have anything. Governments distribute things. So what happens is they, they actually, in our country, for example, the government divides and distributes the power to the branches. That's what it's made to do. The power comes from you. The power is in we, the people. The government is designed to distribute that, to balance the power. Okay? Now, I'm trying to, I'm educating. I hope you're writing this down. So, you got to look at what Jesus is doing so that you can get a picture of this. He sees from afar the fig tree. He's looking at the state of the thing he is, was, that was supposed to be used to usher in the kingdom of heaven, to usher in and announce the kingdom, announce the Messiah. And this entity has all, but in fact, this entity has left its roots and has rejected the Messiah. The Jewish state has rejected the Messiah. So Jesus goes in looking for a, in a temple, looking for information that would say that they are and have accepted the kingdom of heaven that is here and the Messiah that brings that kingdom. But he found nothing. So he says, let me show you this. Are y'all with me so far? This is going to make sense to you in a minute. So he goes and he's look, he said, I want to see if I could see something on it to satisfy my hunger. But when he came to it, just like when he came to the temple, he found nothing. Nothing but leaves. For it's not the season for figs. Verse 14, in response to this, Jesus said, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. He's not really trying to curse a tree. He is showing the result. He curses the thing from the root that failed to produce the fruit that it was designed to produce. He is showing you what happens to an apostate or people that have run away from the kingdom message and programming for the people. That have settled for religion instead. I'm breaking it down. And so... He is showing you through the example of the tree what happens to trees or programs that leave and veer off of the topic. Eventually, the king shows up and he sees no fruit of his kingdom. Now, fruit is not a subjective thing to a king. He is looking for his culture. He's looking for his offspring he is looking for his dna he's not looking that you have a temple he's looking do you have the right program inside of the temple do you have the roots inside of the right system is the tree planted in the right soil because a program listen to me a program planted in the wrong soil that has weak nutrients in the soil this is also synonymous to being under a teacher or under an environment that is not preaching the kingdom of heaven. If it's planted in a soil that is void of the truth of the gospel of the kingdom, it will produce leaves, but it don't have the strength to produce fruit. See, what you need to understand is that there are people gathering in buildings and being void of the gospel, and they are able to produce a leaf because a tree doesn't need much nutrient to simply produce a leaf. But a tree is going to need to be thoroughly nourished if it's going to produce fruit because it takes more power to produce fruit than it does to produce a leaf. 
Listen, 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 listen. See, see, this is why when you are growing something, a plant or something, that's why you get a leaf before you get fruit. Because the tree don't have to be strong to get a leaf out. And we got a bunch of leafy Christians on the planet. We don't have a bunch of fruit bearing Christians on the planet. See, there's a Jesus is drawing a line between people who are just religious and people who understand how the kingdom of heaven functions. Ooh, I'm teaching in here. See, see, this is what you got to understand. When you are planted in the wrong soil and you are feeding from the wrong information, you're going to see leaves, but you're never going to see fruit. And leaves are not edible. You need some fruit. So here's what we talk. So we're talking about the birthing. Listen to me. We're talking about the birthing of a nation. We're not talking about trying to get people out of the earth and into heaven one day and they suffering on the planet. Jesus is looking for something. His temple, his church, his people are supposed to be bearing the fruit of heaven on the earth. But how would that even happen or how would that ever be possible? And I'm going to tell you, so as, let me, I'm going to keep reading this, but you, this is the part you need to understand. He says, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his disciples heard that. So Jesus cursed the root. He didn't curse the leaf. This is what you need to know. If what God has intended to happen from the entities, the systems of the world, especially the church, if it is not happening, eventually God will Cut it down from the root. It will be using up ground without producing anything. So you got to understand, there is accountability to doing what God put the church and us as people and individuals on the earth to do. God is checking our fruit. I'm not talking about Christian religious fruit that you stop cussing. You stop smoking and all of these little things. I'm talking about are we developing a unique culture and identity separated from the perverted values and the corruption of the earth? Can we separate ourselves? Do we look any different? Does our influence create change that God would say, I love the taste of that? Ooh, hallelujah. I don't know how far I'm going to get on this. God's preaching me hard right now. Okay. So he curses it. Now, now listen. So they came back to Jerusalem, and Jesus went back into the temple. Verse number 15. You see how he went out? Then he went back in. And Jesus went back in the temple, and he began to dry. Now look at the example between the two. He goes into the temple. He looks around. He leaves. He goes to the fig tree. He does an example. This is like in a day's time. He, he makes an illustration of it. Then he goes back to the temple. Now, if you're following Jesus around, he's not wandering around. He's teaching you something. So he goes back. He said, now, let's go back over here. So, he, you know, he, he goes in. Can you imagine? You follow him in, and he just he examines. He looks around. He says, okay. He goes out. He does an example. Then he goes back to the same place. And then he goes in, and now he begins to drive out those who bought and sold in the temple. So this is what he saw, right? And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves, and he would not allow anyone to carry wares through the temple. And then he taught, saying to them, it, uh, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations? But you have made it a den of thieves. Just for your notes, write this down. Circle the word prayer. A house of prayer. Religious people don't understand this. But I'm going to help you understand it as kingdom people. A house of prayer is not a building full of people on their knees. You see some religions, that's exactly what that is. It's just a building full of people on their knees. House of prayer. That is not what Jesus is saying. He don't want us gathering. Prayer is fine and getting on your knees is fine. He's not saying my mission is to make sure that my building, my house... Now, remember, in a kingdom, the house is the word for the government building. You know, we have a, a house. It's a white house. It's a government building. Well, in God's house, the church is the government building. 
He's not saying go, you don't go to the government building and start getting on your knees and praying. That's not what he's saying. He says, my house should be a house of prayer for all nations. That is an education statement. The word prayer, when you're in prayer, you're supposed to be getting educated. Because prayer literally just means to get in front of the government. Uh, and see, if you get in front of the government, the word literally just means to go before as a, as a, a government official. Because you can't go before somebody in a, we're talking about government now. You can't go before the leader of a government or a king without clearance to do so. You can't just walk up in there and say, I'm here for a meeting. So the fact that you can pray means that you have the clearance to pray. And that means to come before. Pre is the word. So it just simply means I have the clearance and the ability to come in front of God and learn from him. So God says, I am calling the nations away from, listen to me, away from their programs to come into my system where my program better be present. Yep. I'm trying not to lose you. This, see, see, you never thought of it this way. We are not in here to try to promote government programs. Nowhere on the earth should they be having a service and promoting the policies of their earthly programs. I'm here to set a difference between you and me. I'm here to set it. I'm here to rec, to um, to recognize and show you the kingdom of heaven's laws, governments, systems, ideas, and values. I'm here to represent the values, the customs, the interests, and all of the things that the kingdom of heaven is interested in. If you came in here today from another mindset or another nation then you are here to learn about the kingdom today. My, so imagine you come in here and all we are doing is having religious business. Jesus would look at that and say, I, you know what I'm going to do? If they don't change what they are doing, like the fig tree, I am going to curse that thing at the root and let no one ever eat from that house again. So God is looking for churches to pick up his programming so that when the nations come in it becomes a house of prayer or people before the kingdom of heaven Amen. receiving the influence the vision the transformation from the kingdom of heaven it's not to go in and just repeat a vain repetitious prayer Amen. it's not just a place to come in and kneel down and just you know remain the same but keep saying little prayers you are here to receive the updates, the briefings, the information of the king himself. And he is calling. This is in um, Old Testament. You would see the word assembly a lot or congregation. But you need to understand in a kingdom, this is called the court. You have been called to court. And a court is when they all come before the king at his pleasure. And that you never, never, ever, ever miss a meeting when a king calls you. And when you come to the meeting, you are here to receive. What is the updates from the king? What does he want us to know? What is the national business of the kingdom of heaven to the people who represent the kingdom of heaven in all of your spheres of influence? So can you imagine you come in and we're selling stuff? That's why we don't allow anybody to do business in our church. Don't be selling your basket of soaps and stuff. Don't bring that stuff in here. Don't stop people with your business cards. This is a house of education. Yeah, because when people come here, they want to come and learn about the kingdom of heaven, not dodge everybody trying to get a new customer. If you want to run people away from a church, start letting people do that in church. They say, well, I, I would go to that church, but I got to dodge 15 people before I get through the door. Somebody says a house of prayer, not a house of business. Kingdom business, yes, but not that business. That's out there. I hope you make 10 billions of dollars out there, but not here. I will equip you to do it and celebrate when you do it, but not here. That's fair, isn't it? Because if you do that, I'm going to show up to your business, start preaching it all, and people run you out of business too. Do you know the Lord? I'm just doing hair. Pastor, what you do you know Jesus? I'm going to preach to all your people. See, it don't work the other way either, does it? I promise I won't, I'm going to show up to your hair salon like this. 
Hey, what you doing here, pastor? I just came to preach today. <laughs> that makes sense, don't it? All right. So there's a right way to do things. So we see the example here. So Jesus curses the fig tree. It is an example of the program or the thing that we are rooted in and it's causing us to bear fruit or not to bear fruit as we should. Now, if we go down, I'm going to skip down to he's turning over the tables and all of these different things. And then they wanted, wanted to destroy him. We know that. Why did they fear him? Verse 18. All the people were astonished. They feared and wanted to destroy him because of how he was teaching. Isn't that interesting? You teach the wrong thing, you get attacked. Maybe it's because they never taught anything and just kept the people empty. Everything, everything they would say just left people hungry. Jesus comes in, because remember, they are trees without fruit, so they're going to leave people hungry, right? So they come into a kingdom meeting, and I can tell you this, all over the world I hear the same exact thing, and I don't care how long the church has been standing. It could be a new church or a 50 or 100-year-old church. I went to a 100-year-old church last year, over 100 years. And I preached the gospel of the kingdom, and people said, I've never heard this before. I said, my God, you've been here a hundred years? The Bible has nothing in it but the kingdom. So do you see how dangerous it is? But see, it's good for business to keep you empty. But it's not good for the community for me to leave you empty. Because when you leave here, you got to have some substance to fight what's going on out there. Am I telling the truth or not? So Jesus is checking on his temple because that is the center of kingdom education. Can y'all write that down somewhere? Please make sure you understand what the purpose of your church is. We are talking about desire. So here's what happens now. Let me get down to verse 20. Now in the morning, they pass by. He's going back to the fig tree, y'all. Saw the fig tree dried at the root. And Peter said, remembered, and he said, Rabbi, the fig tree that you cursed was dried at the root. Jesus said, have faith in God. Have faith in God. You should write this down. Have faith in God. That doesn't mean believe in God. Demons believe in God, so that's not anything special. What that really says in the original translation is have faith like God does. Or have the same faith that God has. But how would I have, now listen to this, how would I have the same faith that God has if I'm learning from people that never teach me what God knows? See, if you're going to teach anything that God knows, you're going to be actually teaching from the kingdom of heaven and you're going to be bringing that information into the earth. If every week we're not teaching anything but special philosophy, catchphrases, and some more life coaching stuff and never break the gospel down for you, if we're not doing that, then how are you going to believe what God believes? You don't know what God knows, and faith comes by what you hear. So you're going to develop loyalty for things out there because I'm just telling you, put your best foot forward, and when it was looked like it was going this way, God's going to turn it this way. Hallelujah. In 24 hours, it's about to change. I always make fun of that because it makes me mad when I see preachers doing that to people. You know what they're doing? They're keeping you as a customer. Instead, it don't mean the people are going to lead the church, preachers. It means that we're going to become partners. If I give you the same information God gave me, we become partners. This is my job. When you leave, you're going to do your job. You got a podium and a pulpit out there. So I'm, I'm trying to give you the information for your stage. When you're standing in front of your kids and at your job and out in this community so you know how to think. So if I'm not feeding you from the throne of, listen, it's important that you know where we're pulling the information from. I'm getting it from the kingdom of heaven, which is a completely different country. I'm getting it from a completely different culture. It's not, it's going to sound foreign to you because it comes from a different country. So the culture is different. The way we solve problems is different. The way we get money is different. The way we handle conflict is different. The way we walk is different. The way we talk is different. What we value is different. What we worship is different. Where does that all come from? It comes from the kingdom of heaven. 
The same way you by nature value what you value from whatever country or ethnicity you are from, that simply happened because you were programmed to want it. Your desires are directly correlated with your program. You were programmed to want that. You were exposed to it. You were programmed in it. And that's the only reason you want it. Programming com uh, completes or creates your desires completely. Interesting. So if I change the programming, I change what you want. Isn't that funny? So if I don't give you the new information and let you taste and see that it is good, you never want it. And if you never want it, you never go looking for it. And if you never go looking for it, you never obtain it. So I just keep you in this circle. Wishing things would change, but it never changes. So here's what he said. Now, we're going to have the faith like God. That means I'm going to uh, the faith, same faith of God. That means I am going to have deep roots in the kingdom just as much as God does. God is not rooted in earth's information. You should write that down. How do I have the faith like God or the same faith of God, I got to get my roots. Remember, we're talking about the tree here. The state of the kingdom, the state of the people of God have to have their roots in the same information as God himself. Believe it like God believes it and think of that culture as your home because it is. Hallelujah. And so here's what happens. So uh, verse 23, for surely I say to you, whoever says to the mountain... Now, this is after you believe and know what God says and believes. After that, whoever says to the mountain, be removed and cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will, will be done, he'll have whatever he says. But people like that one. Verse 24, but see, that, that, that's not how it works. Verse 24, therefore I say to you, whatever things you desire, the word ask there is the same word as desire, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, Look at this. Whatsoever things you desire or ask for when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Now, I ain't even got to my teaching yet, but here we go. I'm laying this out. So here's what I want you to understand. When you desire, whatsoever things you desire when you pray. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray. God wants to meet your desire. When you come to God, if you have the desires that God has... According to his will, which is the mandate of heaven being on the earth. Not I just want a new. Now listen to what the, the religious people were doing. Buying and selling, doing business. See, when you come to God and you're just like, God, I need some more money. Increase my business, Lord. God's like, why? What, why? Is it, do you want to increase in your business to help me with something? Or do you, want, do you want advancement in your business to advance yourself? To make sure that you don't suffer anymore. Because you got to understand, the reason you want it is what's going to determine whether or not God makes it come or not. So when you start wanting things for the reason, that's why you have to understand the kingdom mandate. Amen. Amen. Write these things down. You get this so far. So if you're going to get whatsoever things you desire in life, you first have to get your desires reprogrammed because desire comes from programming. And if you're under the wrong programming, desires are wrong. If desires are wrong, it don't matter how much you ask. You won't get it. Or worse, you will get it. And the devil will be the one giving it to you. And you'll think it was God. I've said that many times. Y'all know the devil answers prayers, right? I'm telling you, if you want something bad enough, the devil's listening. He said, what does she want? Lord, please, Lord, please. He know he's watching you. He's got demons assigned to track you. And as you walk around, he's looking at what does she want? What does she want? What does he want? Okay, I'm going to make that happen. I'm going to make that happen. And then when you get it, you're like, oh, Jesus, praise the Lord. And then the devil's like, I got him. They, think, oh, they thought it was God. You see people standing up, they win an award for a perverted song. Yeah. I just want to fake God who gave me that. God gave you that? God gave you the talent and you prostituted it. You sold it to the highest bidder. 
And you see them all at the end of their road. They're like, I can't believe I gave myself away. To yeah. Too late. Hallelujah. Stay with me. Programs and roots of the earth cause you to reject the kingdom. Write it down. If I can program you in an earthly system, which you all are programmed in it already, if I can get you in it, then you will actually reject when God's things come along because they sound foreign to you and everybody desires what is local to them. That's natural. So you have to actually resist that desire, you understand? That's okay. You have to resist the desire because the desire, you, now you know, wait, the desire is not, that's not because that's destiny. That's because of my programming from the earth. So I want that only because they put that in me and I didn't know they were doing it. It was before you actually had a conscious of your own. By the time you're seven years old, all of your subconscious programs are already set mostly. And it is really hard to reprogram that. But now by the time you have developed an ability to be aware of things in life, too late you already have this trajectory. Think of this. So the only thing that can cut you free from that is the word of God. That's the only thing that can sever that tie. Can we keep going? So, all right. So the, the earthly programs cause you to reject the kingdom. That's what you should know. And, they, and then... Once you reject the kingdom, you lose the ability to bear fruit. Not, 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 not deformed fruit, defected fruit on the earth. You can still bear that. You can't bear the fruit in the fruit that remains. And you can't bear the fruit of heaven that adds no sorrow. And you walk around sorrowful for everything that you're bearing fruit of. Everything that you get in life, you regret it later. Yeah. That's how the world system works. It programs you to want it, then you get it, and it kills you. Somebody write this down. It's about to get tight in here. Y'all still love me? These are, these are, these are, I'm reconnecting us to the, the last few weeks. Desires are running the world. Runs the world. Every religion, your personal life, every church, church people, every decision, every industry, every meal you eat, every behavior you eat, every government structure, every vote that you cast, every relationship, every marriage, every choice, all of your careers, it all started with desire. But what if your desires were wrong? If your entire life is driving on a desire and your desires were wrong, desire is the engine. But what if that engine is wrong? And we wonder how we get, you can get to the end of your life and say, why didn't the things I kind of, like, in my spirit I wanted, I never could seem to, like, do those things. It's because you have allowed, as we talked about in the first part, you've allowed your desires to grow to such a state, these carnal and fleshly desires to grow to such a state, that you, listen, instead of shunning it, you'll actually start celebrating it. You ever see people that you know they have, the Bible said they have gone past foolishness and lewdness that means that they have given themselves to it meaning i know it's foolishness i can't seem to stop it so i'm just gonna embrace it seems to be just the way life is yeah and see i'm here to tell you that's a lie you can turn it around but you're just gonna have to get under a, an environment strong enough to cut you loose cut you loose and it's going to be through education. We have to reprogram you. It ain't going to be in a deliverance service. I hate to tell you. It ain't going to be no trips to the altar. That's why I had to teach people about kingdom church. You know, I went to, again, I went to, just went to Nigeria. And we started talking about, okay, we got the kingdom message. Now, what does kingdom church look like, though? Because they asked me, they asked me the question, how do you go about altar calls and this? And I said, you know, I get that question quite a lot, actually. Because I didn't do an altar call there. So I think that's why they asked me. They're used to, you know, you get, I mean, the Holy Ghost was moving. We were running around, throwing stuff. I mean, it got crazy. You know what I'm saying? But at the end, I didn't bring people down. I don't not always do that. It's not. So what I told them, I said, you know what I do? I'm focused on education. I said, you know what I do? I wait. If God says altar time, it's altar time. 
If God says it's time to do communion, we do it. But I refuse to keep putting material things in front of you and pointing you to locations in the church and never giving you the education. Because people, you wouldn't believe, people think a location is anointed. People think if I get over here, if I kneel at this altar, if I go to that church, if I do this every day, if I do all these material things, it is in your programming. When you desire God, you get God. You can get it in a jail cell on your knees in the back alley of, and be drug addicted. You don't need a location. And you certainly don't need another location inside of a building. So if God says do it, we do it. But if he don't, he don't. God wants the program to return to the people. So I told him, I said, we do it. We just do it whenever. Because if you keep doing that every week, I can train people to do anything. We'll play a song to match it. We'll do all, come as you are and all this stuff. We'll have you down here crying, oh God, emotionalism, everything. Eat up all the service time. We spend an hour at the altar just so you can call me next week and say, well, you need some more counseling. Didn't you get the counseling in the hour that I was teaching you? Take some notes, honey. And then get on the podcast. And when you leave, get back on the podcast because you're going to miss half of what I'm saying right now. And that's just normal human nature. See, when you commit yourself to reversing the program, you listen, guys, when you reverse the program in your head and you see creation, how it is designed from heaven's perspective, and you line your mind up with what God desires and you understand the laws of his government, stuff actually starts just to change by itself. There's many things you don't even have to confront. It just falls off. Instead of you fighting everything every day, everywhere, change your mind and you'll be surprised who can't put their hands around you anymore. I'm preaching. So kingdom church is educationally based because when you look at Jesus's operations, the Bible says everywhere he went, he taught. He went in the synagogue and he taught. He didn't go in the synagogue and say, come to the altar, children. Isn't it interesting? Jesus never did an altar call. Isn't that interesting? But churches think that the altar is the fix. I love the altar, but I'm not calling you to the altar unless God says, let's get down into the altar. And your altar might be at your chair. Your altar might be at your desk over there, wherever you are in the world. You don't need to do that in a specific place. We got to desire the education again. We have to start breaking the mental connections and the bondage in our minds. So in our soulless realm. I'm preaching, man. Hallelujah. So here's what happens. So you now you see. Y'all still love me, right? So you see what happens now. If the programming is wrong, everything is wrong. This is why Jesus always addressed the programs and not the specific things. He always addressed. He did. He said that Matthew 4, 17, he addressed the program. He said, repent because the kingdom of heaven is here. What he's saying is the government of the kingdom has always been here ready to govern for you. Ready to supply for you, but it's different and you don't understand it. Change your mind. And a pastor called me one day. He said, Pastor Mike, how do you change your mind? I said, you got to go to a different school. Because he was going to teach the kingdom. He said, he said tell me. I want to I know. I said, I always tell people, repent actually doesn't mean change your mind. Because you can't just change your mind. It means get re-educated. So it actually points you to a different realm. To go up to a different realm because the... To go repent means to return to the top. The penthouse is at the top. So to repent means return to the upper level of thinking. Return to the kingdom. So when you go out of the natural world and you go into the superior kingdom world, you are actually learning from a superior education, which changes the mind, which that completes the cycle. So you can't just change your mind. You have to get re-educated to change your mind. You can't just sit there and say, I changed my mind. No, you're going to have to do repetition, 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 repetition until the mind is changed. But the information by which you repent is important. Matthew 4, can you guys throw that up? 417, repent because the kingdom is here. That's the information you have to have. You don't need, you already went to school. You don't need any more earthly education from me. Okay? 
And that's the reason you fight the kingdom education because they teach people how to be employees in school, not have dominion. The entire system of school is so that you become a worker. You didn't know that? It's not designed for you to have financial liberty. and It'll get you to be successful in the system. But never get out of the system. And most people don't even become successful in the system. They end up dying from trying to be successful in the system. Jesus said, leave the system. You got more information in you than they could ever put in you. You just got to get somebody to brush away the garbage so you can see it. That's what kingdom teaching does. It starts to reveal to you who you really are. Hallelujah. So the school system, write it down. The influences of media, the influences of the world are being hijacked and overrun with Satan's agents. And their goal is to carnalize your mind and to, listen, carnalize your children so that they will have the wrong desires. Or at least, if they don't have completely the wrong desires, at least they will develop sympathy towards evil. And they'll develop sympathy towards evil desires and ideas of others. It won't be enough to just get them to be corrupted. Maybe they can resist it to a degree. But they'll at least, the devil say, you know, maybe at least I can just get them to sympathize with all of the evil activities in the world. You know, maybe they'll start to do that. And that's just as good. Because me connecting and fellowshipping with the world and embracing these evil ideas and these systems and these, and it's not, guys, it's not, we're not just talking about, you know, like I said, the, the big list of things. Don't murder and all of that. We talk, the Bible says that sin is anything operating outside of God's original design. Sin is lawlessness. Lawlessness doesn't mean you don't have laws. Laws means you have your own laws. Laws have to do with the design of a thing. So when you look at the earth, the stars, the moon, the ocean, everything, what you are looking at is kingdom government keeping everything in order. It starts to go out of order because of those who are programming that you with the wrong ideas. And you start to view the world in that manner, and it starts to reflect back to you how you view it. Did y'all catch that? So as they are programming the world and your children... I have to make, you know, oftentimes as a kingdom citizen, I have to make political statements because I represent a government. And as I was traveling, I said, uh, um, the last um, 12 months I've been in six countries in all the different hemispheres. The last three really got me, and especially the last one. We had a leader meeting with the team leaders of this church that I was at. And one of the questions rocked me. Because it gave me a view of my, and really yours too, but especially for me, if, you, if you're willing to accept the assignment, you too. But my, not local responsibility, but my national responsibility and my global responsibility. That it's not just what I teach here that affects here, but it's what I teach here that is affecting them. And he said, this, listen to what he said to me, and please just have an open mind right now as I say this very sensitive information I'm going to tell you. He said, sir, we're just in a staff meeting. He said, sir, why? He said, what do you say about the LGBTQ thing? I said, I said well, this is what I, what I said. I said, well, why do you ask? I said, isn't, isn't that illegal in Nigeria? He said, well, yes. Now, 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 that is extremely illegal. In some cases, it's capital punishment for certain things. Now, it's not, I didn't see one gay person the whole time I was there. Not one. I know there are some, but they're in the closet. And so, I, so, so since he's asking me, I said, well, why, why are you concerned? Don't y'all have law? You have laws, right, against this. And he said, well, sir, this hit me, y'all. It hit me. He said, sir. Now, they're calling me sir now. You got to understand. He says, because whatever comes out of my mouth next they are going to do. He said, sir, because America is the model for the rest of the world, even us. He said, whatever you embrace, our people start to beg for and desire. He said, if you guys continue to do this, we are going to be fighting it too. So what do you say, sir, kingdom, from a kingdom perspective? 
And so I started to tell him our views, obviously, that we're not with that and the reasons why and all of that. So I, he said, but he said, but a lot of your churches are. And a lot of the cities are. You guys have parades for these folks. You paint the streets for these folks. He said, and, and as, I, as I was thinking on the way back home, I remembered the last country I went to, the leader asked me the same question. Because their country just elected a president that was so pro all of this wokeism stuff that it inspired the country because America was doing it. And what you don't know if you don't get out of America enough is that America is still the most influential nation on the globe. And whatever we do, they, the people of these other nations get inspiration to do. We are lighting fires everywhere instead of standing up not just for a local responsibility, but for a global responsibility. And, God's, and this is what God said to me. He said, son, you don't have a local responsibility. He said, you are responsible to the nations. He said, whatever your church is doing is going to be a model inside of a country that is going the wrong direction. You clapping now. Let me keep going. Because listen to me, kingdom things run against worldly things. And the people of the world only desire those things because they were programmed to desire it. So no matter how bad we feel for them and no matter how much we love them, it is not where we can compromise or say that it's okay. So this is what happened to me. As I looked at the, the takeover that's happening in the world through the ideas of these wokeism policies. To me, currently, I said, you know, it's unfortunate that in, because we have an election coming up, right? I said, you know, it's unfortunate that there's, there's, there's only two, two, I always encourage people to vote. I said, you know, but there's only two parties to vote for, right? I mean, we have maybe three if you count independents, but that don't really factor in to most elections. So most people, you're going to vote Democrat or Republican. If you vote Democrat or Republican, that does not make you a Democrat or a Republican. So don't feel like if you have to vote a certain way, you are one of those. You're trying to vote for something that would help the kingdom. Of, now, you're not going to get, there's no God party, okay? The Democrats and the Republicans are not angels on either side. So when you vote, don't ever think that I voted the God party. I'm just, telling you, I'm just telling you how you have to interfere in the system. And so I've said things before, but after the, and it was three countries in a row, and they kept saying that. I was like, man, I don't, know if I, I don't know if I grasped the level of my responsibility. So I answered the question, but then I came back and I said, you know, I'm going to tell my church this. From a kingdom point of view, my assessment, and thank God for term limits. Because whatever you vote for this coming election, it's a term limit on it. So it doesn't box you in, and I don't, I don't recommend you tell everybody who you voted for and all of that, but I'm getting ready to tell you something. Because of the wokeism policies, to me, the Democratic Party is unelectable. Unelectable. Maybe at a certain point in time they were better, but I've watched the last three years them driving these LGBTQ policies, them defending people, hiring people, putting them in the government with wigs and makeup, putting them in front of your children during class time, putting them there and telling them they have to listen to it while you're not there to defend them, approving medication that permanently damages children, telling them at five and six years old that they can be something else that they were not designed by God to be. I'm telling you the truth. There are a lot of things we could debate about. But when you start attacking the family, which is the root of the kingdom of heaven, when you start attacking the children and the marriages, for, and guys, in order for gay people to have a successful relationship, that means a heterosexual relationship has to fail. In order for a gay family to have children, that means that a regular family had to fail. Because they can't produce it naturally. And when, listen, listen, in Georgia, I watched the races carefully. I am not a Democrat nor a Republican, but in Georgia, I watched the man who had reverend in front of his name go downtown with a gay pride shirt on and sit there and smile and say God was with this. 
unelectable. See, this is only if you're a kingdom person. If you're a Democrat, you go right ahead. And I ain't telling you the Republicans are angels neither. I'm not even telling you that they ain't going to mess up a bunch of stuff. I'm telling you in every relationship, everyone, marriages too, there are things that we can fight over. But then there are certain things that have to be on the non-negotiable side. Morality is non-negotiable. Attacking the children is non-negotiable. And I ain't never seen a group of people so woke than I've ever seen these people in my life right now. And the Democrats need a new voice. They need new people. So until further notice, to me, you are unelectable. I know I'm losing my hand claps, but I'm speaking for God. People clapping for that fella because he's with it. You clapping for the wrong one. The woman who's running for governor sat on TV the other day and they said, what you going to do about inflation? She said, you know what's probably the best thing is to abort your children so you can afford it. I said, unelectable. I can't believe you mouthed that on TV and call yourself a Christian. You are not a Christian. You are a politician. And what you want is a vote. You don't care what happens to the people in your wake. So maybe it was better before. But that's why I said term limits are important. Because right now you are unelectable. And if people keep voting for that, they ain't going to change their mind. And when your children grow up and they can't recognize themselves, you have to look back at your decision. And this is how they try to get, you know, we're going to cancel student loan debts and all of this. Listen, that's fine. I'll pay the student loans. Leave the kids alone. You're not getting a vote because you can't get me some cheaper gas. or No. If you want to stop attacking the families... Hiring people. I ain't never seen so many homosexual, gays, transgender folks getting hired in the higher seats of government in my life. And I looked at the parties and I said, well, it ain't but one of y'all pro for this stuff. Ain't but one of y'all that keeps saying it's right. So my responsibility is not just to this state, but to the nations. You don't want to be me for a day. Because we are lighting fires across the world. I don't care about any other thing. There's a lot of policies you can argue about. But these, listen to me, when you're thinking of kingdom things, if you are a kingdom person, you have to think about the foundation of society, which is the schools and the families. If you get, listen, they got drag queen holiday coming to a city near you. You want some pervert going in your child's school with fishnet pantyhose and a blonde wig telling you your kids they can be anything, including a different sex or a different this? The church used to have a backbone. The church used to stand for God. You can love people and say, I don't think so. I'm glad there are term limits because right now you ain't got my vote. You're going to have to change your ways. I'll pay for higher gas and student loans before I vote this stuff into my children. I ain't never seen the fools that can't even. Y'all, when I went to Nigeria, let me tell you something. If we don't straighten up America, there's going to be a big problem. When I went to Nigeria, I filled out my visa application. You know what it says? It says, what gender are you, male or female? I said, my goodness, they only got two choices. You ask a Democrat that today, not everybody. I have a lot of Democratic friends, but I told them, I said, listen, I think right now they don't deserve what you got. They don't deserve your vote right now. They're acting foolish. Because I said, because they said, well, I don't agree with all that stuff, you know, that they're doing. I said, well, stop voting for them for a little while. Maybe they'll change it. You can't say, oh, gas and this and that. And Listen, on the thing in America, it says sex, male, female, other. I said, what Other. You see them fools in Congress sitting there that say, what, what is a woman? Well, I'm not a doctor. What you mean you're not a doctor? Check between your legs. Right. I ain't a doctor either. <laughs> but I got some common sense. When God made man, he made a male and female. <laughs> the world better look out because here come the preachers. Here come kingdom citizens. I'm telling you now, you got to get on the right side of things and argue from God's point of view. These people are depressed, suicidal, and in trouble, and we sitting there patting them on the back. Honey, it's okay if you are that way. 
attack on your freedom of speech, attack on your on your liberties, attack on all this stuff. And then they're going to put you in a little box and lock you down and say, do what I say. And before you know it, it's going to be gone. It'll be gone and you won't get it back. Hallelujah. I ain't never seen people so scared of letting people say what's on their mind. The cancel culture is foolish. That is the persecution. Just think of this. When they hated what Jesus was teaching, they tried to cancel him. When you see somebody trying to silence you, it's because you are a threat. And you know what you do? You get louder. You don't get intimidated and you don't get hateful or resentful. You get your point together and you say it louder. And if they won't listen to reason, you just stand your ground and say, this is where the line stops. Don't say you are reverend and you sitting down there at the gay pride parade looking like a fool. With your t-shirt on. Foolish. If I had time, I'd take you through the Old Testament where when people were in the wrong program and it got so bad that the Bible says there was two, there was two, um, a vision of two figs in Jeremiah. And one was the figs of the, of the people who were pursuing God and God pulled them out and protected them. He said, I'm going to take you back when the time is right. But then there were figs that were so rotten, the Bible says they were uneatable. And they came to destruction. And I thought about it. For several years, in these last three years, I said, you know, I would talk about some different people, but there's only two choices. And I ain't seen as many Republicans standing up with wigs on or pushing these identity politics just to get a vote. All they want is a job. They don't want correct culture. They want a job. And until we wake up and say, hold up, wait a minute now. Now you're going to have this stuff in my kids' schools. Now you're going to try to cancel people that say different than you. When did we lose all of this? In the last three years, it's gotten so bad. Because I used to just tell people policies, you know. And now I'm telling you, unelectable. Unelectable. I'm going to close this right here. I told you it was going to get tight. And listen, I don't hate nobody. I don't hate nobody. I, I don't hate nobody, but I can tell you this. I ain't scared of nobody either. I ain't scared of nobody. God is looking for people rooted. They understand the kingdom of heaven. It ain't going to kill nobody to change their vote. But it might straighten some folks out. And, and sure, the Republicans going to make us look foolish too. But there are some deal breakers that we got to straighten out. The rest of the world is like, why are you painting the streets in rainbows? Now you got our people wanting to do it. Pastor, why do your people want all of this different type of... I was like, I was like man, we don't. We're trying to preach the truth. He said, but they're running away with it. Now our government wants it. And not only that, they're saying it's fine. It's okay. It's okay to be that way. No, we used to say, honey, you need to repent. Yeah. It's not okay. Inclusion has infiltrated the Democrat Party. Everybody's right everybody's right everybody's pretty everybody's in shape everybody's got something to say and this and it's the right it's just their opinion ain't no truth nowhere to be found but i'm here to tell you if you was me for a day this with fear and trembling i am telling you i'm telling you they're gonna come after your children why because that's the generation that don't know any better yet why would they be attacking people? Why, why, why so many abortions? It's not because of the few cases that you can't explain. That's a very small number. It's because that is a murderous spirit. Yeah. I've never seen so many people that wanted to murder folks. Yeah. I've never seen so. And these are the same people. I've seen the famous preachers on TV dancing around with the pro-life stuff. While we're murdering millions of children. Innocent. We have families on the stage today. That's the way it's supposed to be. You're supposed to pray for the other ones. 
I can't believe that woman said, well, you know, inflation is so high, you just they shouldn't force these women to carry these unwanted pregnancies. So that's the answer. Anything to get a vote. I smell it a mile away. Sell out. Just to get a vote. Well, listen, people of God. Your desires come from whoever programs you. If you want the things that the world wants, I'm here to tell you, it's only because you've been in their system that long. You don't actually agree with them. If you get in God's system for a while, you'll start hating it too. You have to repent of some stuff you did. You'll say, oh my God, I was blind, but now I see. I didn't know what I didn't know, Pastor. And I'm, that's why I'm here to tell you this. I'm here to tell you you only want it because they put you through their system and that's why you want it. You, your mom and your dad raised you that way and that's why you want it. It's, you're in this country and that's why you say it must be okay. And now the rest of the world is developing the desires of, the, of America. I said, hold up. I'm all the way home. All the way home. I'm tortured. Tortured. I say, God, I don't want to stand in front of people and say a bunch of stuff. They're going to have to go home and confront. Lose all type of friends and amens all at the same time. These are the healthiest sermons you'll ever hear. Because I love you. I love anybody that you know dealing with these different things. But when you look in the Bible, you see kingdom policies Unfortunately, I wish we had a kingdom party, you know what I mean? Whereas, but we don't. We only got two choices. And I realize, you know what? People are going down a path. They don't realize why they're wanting that. Why do you want that? I'm here to tell you, you only want it because you've been taught to want it. But you can learn to want what God wants for you. You can learn what God wants for the community before it's gone. Can I pray for you? I dreaded this. I want to help people in every situation they are in. But I want America to become a beacon of kingdom light to the world. And I think it was easier for me when I was just dealing with local issues. But then as God started sending me out and they kept looking at me like, what do we do, sir? What do we do, sir? We're following you guys. What is your church going to do, pastor? What, did you, what are you going to say to your people, pastor? Because we're going to say what y'all say. I was like, my God. It's heavy, right? It's real. It's real. And I respect the struggle. I respect how people have to fight with these issues. And the church would never turn our back on anyone. They would just turn our back, their back on us. But we would still be here if they come back. But at some point, you got to understand, we are different. We're here for what God wants. Can I just pray? Shoosh. I got to tell you, I've never made such a bold claim politically. But I felt when you have a conviction from God, it arrests you. It arrests you. You have to say it or I will be punished. God will whoop me. Hopefully I said it well that you can understand my heart and that I'm not being misunderstood. God is concerned. I am his mouth in this house. And I'm just telling you what he's concerned about. He's concerned about your children, your grandchildren, the state of of the education of the world produces evil desires. We can't let them go into our educational hubs, the families, the schools, and all of these different places where people trust in the information. At home, we need mama and daddy. That's what we need. We need those entities because that's the way God made it. Lift your hands. As a matter of fact, you can just stand on your feet. I don't even know what time it is. It don't really matter, I guess. Whoo. Yes. 
dear Heavenly Father, we come before you. God, have mercy. Have mercy on your people, Lord. Have mercy on our nation, Lord. Have mercy on our government, Lord. Have mercy on our educational institutions, Lord. Lord, don't pluck us up at the root. Don't pluck us up at the root, Lord. Give us some more time, Lord. We won't use up the ground, Lord. God, we ask you for more time to get in these systems, Lord. We need more time to reach more people. Lord, I pray that doors of influence open for all of those who had an ear to hear and that can go strategically into these worlds and be an example of a kingdom family. Children won't be confused about who they are. They're not dogs and cats and all of these funny things that they're trying to become now. Lord, we just cancel that idea off of the children of this nation. In the name of Jesus, we cancel the murderous spirit on this nation. Let these babies live and grow and thrive in the name of Jesus. God, I pray you silence the tongue of everyone coming against your purpose and your agenda. Lord, did you arrest the hearts of your people in this place today to hear what you're saying? There's a reason you're screaming out at us, Lord. Turn, turn, turn. America, turn. Churches, turn. Let me bear fruit through you again. Let this kingdom message be taught in your homes and in our churches so that we can have the power to produce kingdom culture, healthy fruits on the earth. Lord, I pray for anyone who may be struggling with their identity, even in this place or online around the world. And God, I pray they'll be set free and be directed straight to a place that can care for them and nourish them back to health, back to strength. I declare freedom, freedom, freedom reigns in this place. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, there is freedom. Where truth abounds, people are set free. Hallelujah. God, I thank you for deliverance by the truth. That they are severed from these evil and wicked desires. That are burning them up and tearing up cities, Lord. Hallelujah. God, we are not depending on one political party. We are depending on a kingdom invasion. We are depending on kingdom insight and wisdom to help us through this, Lord. Let your people walk in the wisdom and the sight of God. Just throw your hands and say, Lord, give me your wisdom. Give me your desires, Lord. Say, not my will, O Lord, but thine be done. I dare you to say it. Say, not my will, O Lord, but thine be done, Lord. Not my will, O Lord, not my ways, O Lord, but thine be done. Let it be done, O Lord, on earth just as it is in the heavens let us see the policies of heaven and bring them into these institutions God I pray for a new voice to invade these parties that have gone astray Lord I pray for new influencers to go in Lord and change the systems from within God we need you Lord we need you Lord we need you Lord not our ways but your ways for your ways are higher than our ways your thoughts are higher then our thoughts, Lord. God, we give you the praise. I know we got to go, but I'm just asking, come on, lift your hands and ask God. This is a serious day. This is a serious day. Your family, your children, your grandchildren, your marriage, it's all on the line. We got to get people back to church. We got to get them back to God. We got to get them back to kingdom thinking, kingdom teaching, kingdom living, bearing fruit. And the fruit remains. And the fruit is influential. And the proof is in the fruit. And people want what we have. And we are dominating on the earth just as it is in heaven. Say, give me the fruit, Lord. Give me the fruit, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Hallelujah. I pray, I pray for you. A divine boldness. 
Lord, let your church be bold and unashamed. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Hey, hey, hallelujah. I dare you to say, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Say, I am not ashamed. I am not ashamed. I am not ashamed. Hallelujah. Woo. The nations are watching. I know you sometimes you feel like you're in your own little corner of the world over here. But what if they stopped you in the street from another country and said, you're tearing up my neighborhood. You're not just tearing up yours, you're tearing up mine. And they said, ma'am, sir, what do you think about this issue? Because with your actions, that is exactly how we answer. With all the love in my heart, I tell you that is the end. That is the end of letting people walk through unchecked. It's the end. There are going to be thriving families, thriving children. Think of our future. I look at these babies. They grow up so fast. They're this big, so quick. Now they're leaders. They're going to go into the governments. They're going to go into banking. They're going to go into media. They're going to go into these worlds. But what program will you put in them? You can't put a compromise program in there. You can say, love your neighbor as yourself. You don't say, agree with your neighbor. Tell them the truth. I bless you. I know I'm blessing you a lot today. Hallelujah. This is a hard day. I bless you. And I speak God's favor over you. I will see you Sunday, okay? God bless you. You are dismissed. Don't hate me. <laughs>